ABC, what's up? It's me, yours truly. I am back to post another quick video here. Uh, back to do another response to the kind of never-ending thread for me. Uh, Ed over on my turntable had a contest a little while ago. I mean, the contest is over. He drew the winners, the whole nine. And his question to enter the contest was simply do a video kind of doing a female artist spotlight. You know, just kind of spotlighting some female artists. So I did a video of kind of uh, some indie artists, maybe that weren't as big or well known, was kind of my theme. And then that made me also want to do one for kind of R&B. And that made me also want to do one for just kind of 90s, 2000s pop rock. And that made me want to do one for like women that like rock. And so now I'm back to do another one that I kind of wanted to do, which was 80s pop and new wave. Uh, being one of my absolute favorite genres and time periods of music is is that 80s 80s pop and new wave just all the culture that goes around that that element um, it just it just really seems like that was the last decade of pure fun when things were just about you know to be cool and be on top if you will uh, it was okay to be colorful it was okay to be a little silly it was okay to smile like like it, it it was it was it was okay to be in a happy state, um, you know, and be on top back then. It's just, um, and I just I I love that even the filth of a lot of the '80s was kept kind of underneath because when we were listening to She Bop by Cyndi Lauper, like we had no idea it was filth. It just seemed like another fun pop thing, or turning Japanese, you know, st stuff like that. Even our filth was kept very fun and colorful, and as kids, we didn't even know what the heck was going on. And then the 90s came along and it was like, you can't be cool unless you look like you're about to kill yourself. Like, you know, that's basically where the 90s turned. But anyway, a whole nother video. This is about 80s new wave, a pop slash new wave ladies. So let's jump right into it. We'll start off here with one that you can kind of put into a lot of different categories, but the one and only, sorry, I'm just trying to get the glare out there. Uh, Blondie, of course, Debbie Harry. Have to say anything about her. You guys know her all too well. This is a 2LP live album from 1999. A really good album. I'm usually not a huge fan of live albums, but number one, they make an effort to actually perform the songs, and, and Debbie still sounds really great on that album. And number two, the song Maria is on there, and I don't think they've pressed no exits on vinyl yet, and I really want to have that song and that album on vinyl at some point in time. So that just has to do until they actually do that. Next, we'll go with uh, Berlin, and of course, we're talking about Terry Nunn here. Um, you know, Berlin was definitely a big, big band in the 80s, and one of the big things that threw them into the stratosphere was Take My Breath Away being connected with uh, Top Gun. Like, just those two things coming together is just like an absolute, just kind of like benchmark on the 80s. But a uh, fantastic band, and definitely got to give Terry some props there. Uh, next... We'll go to Nina, and this is it's all of, all in the game. Uh, she was you know, another huge, huge artist in the '80s. And on some of these, I tried to pick out their albums, that, some of their albums that weren't like their more popular albums, because obviously, you know, she was more known for, or, or kind of became internationally known when the the single uh, "Red Luff Balloons" or or "99 Red Balloons" came out. Um, you know, like that, that just kind of took over at the time, and it, it was the song that introduced me to her. But, <clears throat> excuse me, maybe for those who don't know, you know, she's been performing for a lot of years. I mean, I know she's performing from the 90s and into the 2000s. She might still be performing to this day. And the sick thing about it is, you go look at some of her 2000 performances, and she looks and sounds just like she did back in the 80s. It is so freaking weird that she has not aged or moved a bit. But another fantastic artist that had, you know, a huge impact on a uh, 80s new wave. <clears throat> Excuse me. Like I said, especially with, with 99 Luff Balloons. Uh, next here, Bow Wow Wow, a little I Want Candy. And, of course, you have uh, Annabelle, is, is it Lynn or Wynn? I know, I know she spells it L-W-I-N, but I, I can't remember the exact pronunciation, actually. But, um... You know, yeah, I Want Candy, another huge hit from the kind of the post-punk new wave type of thing. And um, and I believe she was really, really young when she joined the band. I want to say she was like 14 or 15, maybe, something like that. 
So I remember there being a little bit of controversy from her family or whatever when she kept appearing kind of naked on all of their freaking album covers, it seems. Um, but yeah, fantastic group. You know, I Want Candy, another awesome one. And I have no problem throwing Annabelle into this, into this particular thread. And then next here, you have Allison from uh, the group Yaz. And this is You and Me Both. <clears throat> Excuse me. Again, another great album by them from 1983. Even though their biggest hit is probably off of uh, their album Upstairs at Eric's and the song Only You, which I think is still just one of the greatest songs from the, the 80s New Wave time period. Um, love her vocal delivery because she was kind of she was kind of right there with what was going on in the 80s from the standpoint that when you first heard her back then, especially when you didn't have internet and smartphones and all of that, it was kind of hard to tell sometimes, is that a woman singing in a slightly low tone or is that a guy singing in a slightly higher tone? But it was like really hard to tell. She just had like the, the smooth place that she, she kind of did her thing and it, it was just freaking awesome. So, so much great stuff there. So, Yaz, uh, Allison from Yaz is definitely one that I'll throw in there. And it's also fun to give props to, uh, you know, Vince Clark, you know, the, the duo uh, there with Yaz. Because, you know, he had he had worked and, you know, done stuff with Erasure. He had done, he was in Depeche Mode for a while. So, talk about someone that had been around the synth and had made some awesome big synth tracks. And, you know, they, they were bound to have success together. So, uh, another awesome name within that band. Uh, let's see. Next here, I'm going to go with Patty Donahue from The Waitresses. Again, another just absolute legendary one here. Uh, unfortunately, I think she passed away in like 95, 96. So, you know, she was fairly young considering uh, it's a cancer, of course. It, but um, yeah, you know, before she did, she definitely left us some great music and just some of the most fun memories for me connected back to the 80s. You know, they had a lot of big hits, but, you know, I Know What Boys Like, I think was definitely their biggest. And it was one one of the three magical songs, you know, to me, because as much as I love 80s movies, 80s comedy, 80s slapstick comedy, but especially any 80s comedy about a boy trying to get a girl, uh, there was pretty much one of three songs that you were guaranteed to get in that movie. Shake It Up by The Cars, Whip It by Devo, or I Know What Boys Like by The Waitresses. So it's just like in 80% of all those movies, one of those songs was going to show up somewhere. So, <clears throat> excuse me, The Waitresses and, you know, uh, that song with Patty definitely just kind of cements itself as one of the things that reminds me of all the fun about the 80s. So, uh, yeah, definitely want to throw her in the mix here. Uh, next, we have The Flirts. Another kind of interesting band, too. Um, there's not really one specific lead singer from The Flirts. So this was basically some projects by uh, Bobby Orlando with just some different stuff that he, you know, different musical things that he did. And I believe he brought on, like, a number of various girls, depending on different albums, uh, that actually perform. So it's not as necessarily a specific girl that I'm going to highlight. Um, off of this album, let's see, it looks like it was uh, Andrea, Re Rebecca, and Holly. Oh, and Bobby. So I guess there was a fourth one in there as well. But, uh, but yeah, just, again, what I was saying earlier, this was just kind of that fun, colorful, just awesome 80s stuff. Like, none of the, none of the women here were, were you know, they weren't singing like Whitney Houston or something like that. But you know, you remember the song Jukebox? Like, don't put another don't put another dime in the jukebox. I don't want to hear that song no more. I mean, that was the flirts. You know, it was just kind of fun, playful, poppy stuff like that. And the stuff that made the eighties magical to me. So I definitely want to throw them into the mix here. Uh next here, we're gonna go with a little Martha Davis from the Motels, another huge band from the eighties. Uh, you know, they put out quite a few different albums and you know again just a lot of lot of great stuff so again i won't spend too much time on that but definitely give martha some props and susanna from the the bangles again another one to give some good props to um just like i was saying with nina too when you see her today still looks fantastic still you know seems like it's just a couple of days past the 80s 
Um, not quite in the spotlight as much anymore. I think she's kind of just, you know, doing the mom, raising a family thing and all of that. So it's, uh, you know, always great to see that someone that, that gave us so much joy and so many awesome things back in the 80s and still great music to listen to today is kind of still off having a good life. And so that's always great. But Susanna definitely goes in that. And last but not least, I'm going to go with a little Rindy Ross from Quarter Flash. Another one of those bands that really kind of made their mark in the 80s. If, if you have dug through dollar bins over the course of, you know, the last however many years you've been collecting records, you've probably seen a ton of Quarter Flash records. Don't pass on them if you're not familiar with them. Great, great 80s pop and new wave stuff. Uh, this being my favorite, Take Another Picture, and uh, the song Take Me to Heart. It's definitely my favorite song by them, especially the way that Rindy does the second verse in that song. Like, I love the delivery, I love the lyrics, it's just, it's so 80s and just so cool to me, I absolutely love it. So, uh, Quarter Flash and Rindy. So, there you go, VC, 10 more uh, female artists to highlight there. Like I said, I'll probably be back with one more, and we'll, we'll kind of see if there'll be another one after that, but I think I can cut it off at six. So, uh, as always, let me know what you think, and uh, we will talk to you soon. All right, take care, guys.